This week we discuss the posing at inappropriate times. Let's split up and look for clues because we totally aren't going to be hunted down right now. Scott Pilgrim versus Let's permanently forget Hamon ever existed. Main characters have their wounds magically heal after each encounter. Yu-Gi-Oh! stole the premise of each new part being set further in time with a new cast and the main character's name being a deviation of a specific prefix. Here is the very next thing that will come out of your mouth. Yu-Gi-Oh! is an original idea. Freddy Jr., Sea Monkeys, Wanna Throw Hands? You gotta be ready for that. A Queen's Ransom and classic rock and music references that are all butchered to avoid copyright issues in English. I stand Joseph, even if he is unfaithful. And always leading to an abrupt ending anime itself. This week we are telling you why you wouldn't survive JoJo's Bizarre Adventures stands. Stardust Crusaders. Before we start, if you want to avoid spoilers in today's video, or just want to watch it all over again before going forward, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Parts 1-5 through 5 in their entirety are all on Crunchyroll, today's sponsor. With an expansive library of anime, all ad-free, you can get a 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium right now by going to crunchyroll.com slash staywow. I have been checking out Konosuba, God's Blessing on this Wonderful World, of course, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the fourth time, and even my favorite series ever, One Piece where they have new episodes of it released in just one hour after its initial Japanese broadcast. That is faster than Kizaru decking X-Drake right in the face. Again, that's two whole weeks of free anime to watch on Crunchyroll Premium just by going to crunchyroll.com slash staywow or by clicking the link in the description. Leave a comment below and let me know what titles I should be checking out on Crunchyroll to possibly cover in a future Why You Wouldn't Survive scenario. Now, typically during these Why You Wouldn't Survive videos, we go over the lore behind everything. So be forewarned, there will be spoilers ahead. Originating from a meteorite that crash landed on Earth 50,000 years ago in the area that would eventually be Cape York, Greenland. Hundreds of years before the 20th century, an unknown man discovered this crash site and figured out the nearby rocks had become enchanted with what he believed to be the power of gods. He fashioned these rocks into arrowheads, but through unexplained events, he and the six arrows he created became lost in time. The meteorite's crash site was again discovered in 1978 by an excavation team, where an alien virus was also discerned that completely killed anyone infected by it. Government scientists painstakingly researched this phenomenon as some of those afflicted had actually evolved, surviving the virus and gaining otherworldly powers. In 1986, the long-forgotten arrowheads were unearthed in Egypt and stolen by a young Diabolo, who kept one and sold the other five to the creepy old Enyaba the Hag. Slowly but surely, these arrows would be used to awaken the abilities of the stand in people that were what you might consider mentally strong or worthy enough. Long story short, they are generated from the life energy of an individual, manifesting as beings dependent on a person or animals fighting spirit, their mentality, and the nature of their environment and upbringing. These ghostly ripples, otherwise known as stands, named because of the nature in which they stand by their master, are, as a majority, invisible to the average person except to other stand users. People cannot harm stands in any way, as only stands can fight, defeat, and even kill other stands. However, stands can easily kill any and every living thing if given the chance. A person can learn to control them over their life and utilize them to the best of their abilities. But that is all extremely dependent on their innate fighting spirit and mental fortitude. Whenever the stand is injured, the person projecting them will suffer similar injuries like mortal wounds through the chest or even broken teeth. Now the arrow can give some people the power of a stand, but for those who lack these qualities would simply die of this virus after being pierced by the arrow. And that will be the case for a wide majority of you watching. The arrow can be used on unwilling participants or to create superhumans for good or evil purposes, but it needs to pierce flesh in order to contract the virus. 
and Yaba the Hag did so with her lord and master Dio, a nearly invincible vampire that stole the body of Jonathan Joestar. I can explain all of that, the whole vampire thing and having somebody else's body in a separate video if you guys want that in the future, and gave the power of the stands to a litany of loyal servants. But in the case of individuals like Joseph Joestar and Jotaro Kujo, descendants of Jonathan Joestar would also be granted the power of a stand due to their bloodline. And you know, I don't know how a virus like this infects relatives across the world in Japan, Egypt, and the USA. They don't really explain that, but it goes through a bloodline. Jotaro, at first, thought this newly attained power of his was a demon that haunted him that nobody else could see, and people around him would see objects float to his possession and surfaces and people being assaulted without him even lifting a finger. Jotaro would learn of the spirit's true nature from his grandfather Joseph and slowly learn to master the power alongside other Stan users. However, Jotaro's mother would also be granted a stand, but due to her lack of fighting spirit would slowly die of an unknown affliction to medical knowledge. But in actuality, her stand was looking to slowly kill her. So two things here, you can either gain a stand through this mystical arrow or through hereditary gain. But it doesn't mean the stand will work in your favor. However, the methods of attaining the power of a stand aren't completely concrete. Series creator Araki Hirohiko tends to allow plot holes to happen in the series, or simply completely forget certain aspects of the universe even occurred. Characters like Mohamed Avdol, Jean-Pierre Ponoreff, and Noriaki Kakyoin all stated they had their stands available from either birth or a very young age. So they all attained their stands, not through the arrow and not through hereditary gain. They just appeared. And also to note, each person is restricted to having one stand. So what kind of abilities and powers of all shapes and sizes can appear in these stand users? How would that equate to everyone not surviving their onslaught if there wasn't a Joe Star or a plot armored companion with miraculously healing wounds there to take down? Much like my SCP video, we will be covering a large majority of these stands shown in the anime and slightly discussing what they are capable of. In the show, we see stand cards and statistics to display their capabilities, ranging from categories including destructive power, speed, range, persistence, precision, and development potential, all graded from A to F. I will show these charts with every stand, so keep these translations of these charts in mind going forward. Today, we will discuss if each of these stands were to hunt you down as a non-stand user and how screwed you would be. But since there is a lot to cover, this will be a lot like my SCP video, and I'll have to only cover those seen in part three, Stardust Crusaders. And if this video does well enough, I'll move on to Diamond is Unbreakable and Golden Wind. So recommend, watch, and enjoy. With the formalities out of the way, I know it's a long time coming, let's go ahead, Mr. Juster. And of course, we have to start with the stand of the yada yada man himself. Jotaro Kujo's Star Platinum is a monster of speed, strength, and wit akin to a stand master. Its sheer strength allows it to physically toss a fully occupied jeep, bend bars of steel with relative ease, and even crush artificial diamond. So I guess diamond isn't so unbreakable. It has superhuman speed and reflexes, being able to catch bullets and lightning fast insect stands out of the air in the blink of an eye. Speaking of the eye, its sight can see up to four kilometers away in open spaces. Its signature move in the Ora Ora Rush, mixing its speed and strength to ultimately pulverize the hell out of anything and anyone in a flurry of fists often leaving people hospitalized or even dead. Most notably is its learned capacity for Dio's Zawardo, which we will get into later when we discuss the world. If someone with Jotaro stand were to hunt you down, you would be a bloody pulp of broken bones and crushed dreams as it can easily hunt you down and break through any of your defenses, all simply because you slightly pissed off the user, as Jotaro was seen to beat up anyone that slightly annoyed him. Wait, who is that? Is is that Avdol? Yes, I am. Oh! 
burning his way in, Magician's Red, led by Muhammad Avdol, is a bird person with the ability to conjure and manipulate scorching hot fire. Besides burning you to death in a hurricane of flames, it can also bind you in a rope of fire and may try to suffocate you by burning any nearby oxygen. If it has a hard time hunting you down, it may create a life detector. Pointing in any direction possible, it will detect heat signatures of its opponents to find them at will. So it can find you if it really wants to and burn you alive or suffocate you to death. Now every rose has its thorn, and Joseph Joestar, the obviously best Joestar, wields Hermit Purple, a series of sharp and sturdy purple thorny vines that can either bind foes, lash at enemies, or even swing like Tarzan, the ape man. But its most crucial power is to divine information. By embedding these vines into electrical devices like TVs and cameras, to discover details about their target in photos or spliced broadcasts. If in a pinch, it can lay out intricate maps and layouts of cities in sand and dirt and test to see if machines have been tampered with. While not formidably strong, being choked out or crushed by someone who can figure out everything about you and where you are just by smashing a few devices can be a relentlessly exhausting endeavor. Splashing into the scene, Noriaki Kakyoin manifests the humanoid cluster of membranes known as Hierophant Green. Using its colony of membranes, it can distribute its form as it pleases, most notably in the form of strings, either so thin that they are invisible to the naked eye, which, I mean, it's already a stand, so it's going to be invisible, but if you're a stand user, it's still going to be invisible to you, or large webs in order to detect enemy movement. However, having these membranes exposed and destroyed can cause significant harm to its user. It can also force Hierophant Green into a human host, taking control of their bodies to use them as they please, using innocent victims to protect the stand from direct damage, unless you run the risk of harming the stolen body. If it ejects itself from the body, it can obliterate the lungs and internal organs of the host killing them instantly. As its most powerful attack, it can use Emerald Splash, firing emerald-like projectiles at high speeds like a shotgun blast, shredding an opponent in moments. Being caught in its web, having you or your loved one's body hijacked and then shotgunned by gems is another example of an easy demise by these stands. The second to last of the Stardust Crusaders and a romantic Frenchman, Jean-Pierre Ponereff wields the stand Silver Chariot, being an armored knight with a sharp rapier that can move at such a high speed that after images of its form can be seen to make for a difficult time targeting it. It can slice through solid rock and cut bullets in half mid-shot. Now, if you were able to land a devastating blow on it that would kill most men, it would simply just shed its armor, making it more vulnerable to damage, but increase its speed exponentially, allowing it to skewer you before you can even blink. If backed into a corner, Silver Chariot can even shoot the tip of the rapier like a rocketed projectile to shish kebab you from afar, although this will leave Silver Chariot unarmed. So you're dealing with an enemy that can become almost unhittable even if you do land a blow on it, and it can stab you in a number of ways that will have you looking like Swiss, or should I say a French kind of cheese? And the final Stardust Crusader, a dog named Iggy, can muster the will of a stand who controls the fool. Don't let the name fool you. This clumping together of grains of sand can take many forms to attack at will. It also manipulates sand that cannot be muddied by any kind of liquid and can change its density at will to envelop you in a sand trap to either keep you in place or suffocate you. Being able to take any form at once can make for a vicious killer. And if caught in a sand-ridden environment, you may be sunk in the quicksand of its power before you can even bark up the wrong tree. Of the many minions of Lord Dio, the first that we encounter is the Tower of Grey, a rather large stag beetle with many jagged fangs. Behind these teeth is a sharpened stinger, which combined with its insane speed can rip through flesh like a bullet. Due to its small size and complete discretion, the user can utilize this stand to massacre large numbers of people, rip out their tongues as trophies, and take pleasure in the death of innocence. Sometimes, even for a little cash on the side, as we've seen with the user who killed tons of people just to make it look like accidents. Now, if you have a fear of the sea, Dark Blue Moon 
can amplify that. An amphibious looking stand with enough strength to destroy still running boat propellers to leave you stranded at sea. It can also manifest barnacles in mere moments all over your body that will sap your strength and leave you drained for an easy kill. If it doesn't come aboard your vessel to rip you to shreds with its sharp claws that can slice a shark in two, it will drag you into the watery depths below, where it can swim faster than most aquatic life, create whirlpools to keep you submerged, and its user, in order to keep its sight on you, can even stay underwater for up to six minutes due to their advanced lung capacity for being a seaman or seaman, whatever you prefer. You'll most likely asphyxiate while this creature disembowels you as you sleep with the fishes. The ocean doesn't stop with its potential threats, as the simply titled Strength can meld with any boat to transform into a giant freighter that can be seen, touched, and even entered by regular people. Used by a gorilla of all creatures, which, if you need an explanation of why you wouldn't survive an encounter with a gorilla, well, that's on you. It can bend the vessel's shape at its will. It can maneuver whatever is on or a part of the ship at its will even impaling passengers with its hooks to seemingly act like accidents, using every component, from metal piping to the floor itself, to trap you and consume you into its metal framework like quicksand, as the gorilla maneuvers around each surface as if it were all liquid. Your fate will be decided by either being crushed by a ship's inner makings, being forced to sink within the stand itself, or facing the gorilla itself and having your appendages ripped off like you were a toy tortured by sin. I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. <laughs> Taking the concept of Chucky to a different level, Ebony Devil relies on the hatred the user has for its target. The user must be injured by its prey to activate, and once the resentment of being harmed sets in, the user can pretend to kill themselves, lowering your guard thinking your enemy is dead. The stand will then possess a nearby object, and in the case of the anime, an African shaman doll. Much like the movie Trilogy of Terror, this doll will stealthily slash at your shins, tie you to objects to torture you slowly, and rip out your throat with its newly developed sharp teeth. Although I wouldn't have a doll like this lying around, the fact that it can possess anything similar can be terrifying. I mean, I have a ton of figurines that could come to life and kill me in my sleep, especially this evil looking bastard here. If you manage to put up a fight and damage its possessed figure, its resentment over you will grow, making whatever it possessed more powerful, stronger, and speedier over time. Do you feel like seductively licking cherries? Maybe having an old woman explode in a golden shower? Yellow Temperance is a piss-colored version of the Blob, a yellow, gelatinous mass. This stand can absorb the mass and flesh of organic life to make itself larger and stronger. Even a droplet of this goop hitting your body can have it expand and consume your body whole until you corrode into nothing. Attempting to burn or freeze the goop will just make it either grow faster or develop spikes that will dig into your flesh further, so there is no getting rid of the goop that is upon your body unless you defeat the stand user. The user himself can also shape his own form and appearance using the mass to look like anything and sound like anyone he wants in order to lull people into a false sense of security before striking. Anyone around you could be yellow temperance in disguise before it decides to drench you in a thick yellow golden shower to integrate your entire being into its own. Do you understand? If you're in front of a mirror, you're probably already dead as the hanged man will probably use that to its advantage, maneuvering through the reflections of any reflective surface and attacking your reflected image to cause similar damage. If your image is within a reflective surface like glass, water, metal, or even the human eye, it can transport between each reflection at the speed of light and slice your reflection and you up with its wrist knives to cut you open and have you bleed out in no time. Your only countermeasure against him is to be in an area with absolutely no means of reflection occurring, which since you are already staring at the reflective surface of your phone, TV, or computer, you're gonna be mid-speed by these mummified stabby boys. 
A simple stand on the surface, the Emperor is basically just a revolver that can be conjured to the hand of its user at any moment. However, the bullets fired from this firearm can also be controlled, allowing them to be maneuvered in a homing way, able to track their target, and able to whip around obstacles and hit their mark without issue. Whole Horse can whip out his heat faster than any cowboy can draw, which this gun is also invisible to the normal human eye, with bullets that will almost never miss. It wouldn't be a why you wouldn't survive video without some type of infection, and the Empress has got us covered. Originating as a simple drop of blood, once it makes contact with your body, even just your skin, it can create a developing wart on the point of contact on your body. It will extend its reach to consume foods and small living creatures to grow more and more, eventually developing into a humanoid whelp of a being. It can literally create arms and just extend to kill birds or anything nearby to consume them to grow bigger. And once it has consumed enough, can look to kill you if you are not wary of it, attempting to drive nails into your throat, or even framing you for crimes that it itself committed to get you either arrested or killed. As was the case for Joseph, as this wart created a mouth that could wield a scalpel to kill a poor doctor. If you give the stand user enough time to where the wart can take over your body, they themselves can put their body inside of yours, basically becoming a parasite inside of your body and able to control you at will, but you yourself will be dead the entire time. Now taking the movie Christine and giving it a pimp my ride twist, Wheel of Fortune can transform just about any standard motor vehicle into a monster truck wannabe. Much like the stand strength, it can manipulate the framework of the vessel it is controlling at will. This demonic car will be able to morph its form in order to squeeze into crevices and manipulate the direction of the tires to drive on vertical surfaces like walls and even create spikes on its wheels to make that even more possible. Being able to be the world's greatest all-terrain vehicle to chase you down, it can also fling its gasoline at you at high speeds to pierce your flesh like flammable bullets. Now keep in mind what I just said, because it can ignite this gasoline with its manipulated exposed wiring to light you ablaze from afar. If you're being hunted down by this stand, you will be the victim of a hit and run or homicidal arson that will leave you DOA. Silent Hill called it wants its fog back, but Inyaba the Hag has other plans. Her stand, Justice, creates a billowing fog that can change reality and control others within its realm. While inside the fog that Justice creates, physically manifested illusions can look and feel real to the touch, creating buildings and whole towns on cemeteries and even resurrecting dusty old skeletons as dreary, mundane living people. Much like Joseph when he attempted to jump in his car only to be jumping into the pointed edge of a stabity fence. But more frighteningly so, if you find yourself injured in even the slightest way against Justice, well, Justice will prevail begrudgingly. No matter the size, Justice will have its fog enter your wound to create a vacant gaping hole in your flesh so that the fog strings can control a part of your body like a marionette. The dead bodies it brings back can also be controlled in large numbers acting as undead soldiers doing her bidding. You are going to be signing your own death warrant, even entering her domain as her army of zombies can attack you or just give you a tiny scratch that will have the stand user controlling that part of your body in order to either immobilize you for the zombie army to stomp you to death or rip you apart or simply have you off yourself by pointing a gun to your head. Now, have you ever had a friend or family member say, I feel your pain? Well, with the stand of the levers, that is being reflected pretty heavily. The stand user, smaller than that of an ant, can fly around at incredible speeds and enter your brain through your ear canal. When this little golden bugger attaches itself to your gray matter, the user of the stand will start a rather self-inflictive ability. Whenever the user takes any form of damage or pain, the levers he controls will go insane inside your brain and start to cause damage equal to your body but magnified. So basically, if you give this guy a bruised leg, now you have a broken leg. Give him a concussion, now you have hemorrhaging. If you got shot to the heart, well, you're too lame. 
and well, you're instantly dead as well. And even though we aren't discussing Dio's flesh buds, the lovers were able to carry individual spores to the brain to infect it. Meaning, if in the most diabolical of hands, this stand could easily carry any kind of deadly virus to infect your brain instantly without you being the wiser. So basically, you can't harm the user in any way or you will die or be heavily injured or it can infect you with a deadly disease without you being any wiser and you just croak. Oh shit! Bring in the heat with a simple name, the stand called the sun, manifesting as a giant sphere in the sky, able to cause extreme increases in temperature on anything it casts its light upon, constantly shining its bright light. It makes every time of day feel like high noon, with the forecast calling for a high of 176 degrees, or 80 degrees Celsius for you European bastards, spreading across a large radius for drastically long periods of time. While any kind of high temperature like that could cause severe heat stroke, deliriousness, dehydration, heat exhaustion, and even burning of the flesh to any foe, it can even focus its light to shoot you down with laser light beams, pretty much gunning you down just because you tried to attack the sun. The user is also fully susceptible to the effects of its own stand's heat, and must keep themselves in a climate controlled environment to see their target's hot and drawn out execution. While it makes for a miserable way to go, it took a lot of prep time for this user to be able to use it to its full advantage, as it took the heroes of the story being in a desert, giving him enough time to set up mirrors around a giant area, and giving him enough time to make a hidey hole that had air conditioning and water. That way he can make it seem like the desert itself and day was endless. Now, if you don't keel over from heat stroke, not be out in the open and get shot in the head by a light beam, or go insane, you could probably find out his plan if you look hard enough. Going from a nightmare on Elm Street to a nightmare to go, Death 13 will invade your dreams, Freddy to kill you. While the user in this series is simply an unassuming baby, we can't assume every stand user will be the exact same in a real life scenario every single time. But the point is the stand, Death 13, can only conjure itself within the dreams of one or more individuals at a time. Anyone that falls asleep near the stand user will be fully at the will of this stand, falling into one singular dream world controlled by this happy looking reaper. Those stuck in its realm can be attacked by a malleable environment, with Death 13 being able to summon objects of murder at will, being able to manipulate parts of your own body so they don't work or they just go insane, or do anything it pleases with the world in front of it. While in the dream, any and all injuries you suffer while combating it will, of course, reflect and happen to your real physical body. So being decapitated or disemboweled in your dream by the scythe isn't recommended. Those in its dream realm cannot bring their own stands unless they are already summoned while falling asleep, leaving even powerful stand users wide open to attack. On top of that, no one can wake themselves up whatsoever and must be woken up by outside stimuli like other people or loud noises. On top of that, Anyone that awakens from Death 13's nightmare will not remember a single detail about what occurred, no matter how frightening or severe, much like how many people can't remember their dreams after awakening. So basically, if the stand user of Death 13 can stay close enough to where you and them fall asleep, it can control the world that you are within. It can meld the world in front of you to its will and can continuously try to eviscerate you. Even if you are awakened before the death blow is struck, you won't remember a single damn thing about what happened, so you can't alert your friends of what's going on, you can't better prepare yourself for another encounter, or you can't even tell yourself not to fall asleep again. You are basically the target of an assassin that you cannot escape, defend yourself against, or will most likely forget even if you survive against them, giving them ample chances to try and make you rest in pieces. Did you hear they're already remaking Aladdin again? But instead of Robin Williams or Will Smith, we are getting Judgment! A metallic homage to the traditional genie, it holds much combat prowess and sturdiness, but its true strength relies on its ability to grant wishes. Much like any story involving wishes coming true, there are always hidden funny stuff to be discovered. In the case of Judgment, 
it creates clay constructs of whatever you wished for to lure you into a false sense of security. But only after yelling the phrase, if you take the bait and end up wishing for riches, they will only end up being fake as you fawn over your new fortune for a swift strike to the back. If you try and wish a dead relative of yours back to life, judgment can create an image of this deceased person out of clay. With this new imposter looking, sounding, and even feeling like them, even having their exact memories, but however, these new creations that will look like your dead loved ones will crave the flesh of the living and will try and most likely succeed at devouring your body if given the chance. While being killed by a buff robotic looking genie or being killed by a clay zombie of your dead friend or relative, you have to wonder what other ill-fated wishes this stand can conjure. Polnareff wanted his own theme park. So would he have been killed Final Destination 3 style by one of these rides if the wish went through? He also wished to be a manga artist, although I don't know how Willed Clay would make this a dangerous wish, unless they become a hentai artist and end up getting necrosis of the dick from wanking it too much, like Eric Estavio, the guy who tried to sue Twitch for $25 million for having sexy streamers on their platform. Either way, these wishes are going to come back to bite you, and if you do somehow end up making a wish this genie can grant without a deadly repercussion, I'm sure it will just pummel you to death anyways with its metal fists. Actually, I think that'd be pretty interesting. What do you guys think would be a pretty reasonable wish that would not come back to kill you? Hank? Now they're minerals! Rocking our world, the stand Priestess is a goopy, masked freak, is ferocious in nature despite its very small stature and size adorned with razor-sharp claws that can rip through metal itself. Her true sense of deadliness comes from her ability to assimilate into any mineral-based object or inorganic material, and shapeshift into them as well. It can disappear and reappear in any man-made or rocky environment, blending in as regular everyday objects, or even turning itself into a spear gun that it can shoot itself towards others. It can meld into buildings and even submarines to make its location wholly unknown while it schemes its next attack. She could take the form of any everyday object like a phone, a little toy, or anything you could think of around the house and surprise attack you at will and kill you. But that's not the worst thing about her. She is even shown to assimilate with large amounts of inorganic matter, like the beds of seafloors, to become a giant face able to swallow people whole and crush them between its gargantuan teeth that are as hard as diamonds. If put in the right scenario, it could possibly meld with mountains, buildings, and more to guarantee you will be crushed by its ability. The fact that it can be in any shape and size will have you at a disadvantage not knowing what you'll be up against. This next one is basically Daredevil, but on a liquid diet. Echolocation can be a deadly tool for those that utilize it well. The stand, Geb, is basically a porous liquid, small enough in volume that it can fit inside a canteen. It can morph its shape into a violently strong physical form. So strong, in fact, that it can rip the head off a man in seconds and pull the remains of the head inside the container it came from. It can propel itself at high enough speeds that it can pierce through flesh like a bullet as well. Being a liquid similar to water, it can maneuver in any environment that allows water to flow freely. If you are planning to hunt the user down to stop this watery killer, good luck, as the controller of Geb can maneuver it as they please from numerous kilometers away, relying on vibrations to discern where the target is, meaning any slight movement that you make on ground or if you have sand kicked up in the air, the user can figure out where you are like a sonar, releasing Geb through a crack in the concrete or the sand beneath your feet to shoot through your brain in moments. You will be killed off guard by literal water ripping you apart by a man that cannot even see you but can feel you from miles away. You will never see what's coming before the infinite void of darkness consumes you. 
Now the last few stands have been pretty damn dangerous, but this next one is mainly for shits and giggles unless used by the right user. That being Kunum, which allows its user to change his face, appearance, body, voice, and even scent to that of anyone he can visualize. Although Yellow Temperance did the same with a lot more powers to back it up, having the ability to basically become someone else will give them a chance to get in close with you while your guard is down to attempt to either poison you, stab you in the back, or even paint an explosive like orange for you to be blown up by. Kunum makes for a sneaky weapon, pretty good for espionage and getting close to the targets you want to kill without raising any alarms. But that's not how it worked in the anime as the user had a horrible time trying to keep up as the person they were trying to kill. The best part about the stand is that it works pretty well with a different stand by the name of Thoth. Thoth is a comic book, or for diehard weebs out there, manga book seeable to anyone, filled with blank pages that slowly reveal stylized cartoon panels that act as premonitions of high accuracy. However, its future sense is limited to only a few minutes, and if the reader does not follow the order of events that the comic describes, they themselves will be punished by the universe, as was the case for both of Boingo's partners, Oingo and Whole Horse, with Oingo disguising himself as Jotaro only be taken out because of the book's prediction to kill a Jotaro lookalike, and for Whole Horse, who was supposed to shoot Jotaro at high noon through a pipe, only to be revealed that his watch was a little bit too fast, with the preceding bullets taking him out, instead to fulfill the prophecy of someone being shot in the head. If in the right hands, this little comic book could act as a surefire way to exterminate others without fail, as it weighs out all outcomes of a situation or event, and if followed, will guarantee its foreseen outcome. It's just that the characters of Oingo, Boingo, and Whole Horse in the series tended to screw that up for some comical hijinks amongst all of the mostly serious nature of the series at that point. But if someone can kill you just by having a comic book to tell them to shove their fingers up your nose, I mean, hey, the sheer randomness of events that go from shoving fingers up noses to death, I mean, that's just somebody able to predict the future, but even though it might seem random, so you're gonna die in the most random and asinine ways. Taking things into its own hands, <clears throat> I mean, Hilt Anubis exists within a fine sheath sword containing a stand that looks exactly like the image of Anubis, being a muscular man with the head of a black hound, basically the world's first furry, being a literal stand that acts and thinks on its own. The sword is completely harmless on its own, but when someone draws the sword from its sheath, their mind and body will be taken control of by Anubis. The stolen host will, however, retain the amount of fighting prowess that they had before being possessed, meaning they won't get any better with the sword just because an ancient Egyptian god is in control. Anubis will make its sword unsheathable to anyone it doesn't deem worthy to fight with its blade. The sword itself will also be able to cut anything it wishes nearby, meaning even though it's seemingly cut through a stone pillar, the pillar itself will be unharmed and uncut, as the blade makes its way through it to slice through the foe on the other side of the pillar. The sword can passively face through objects and cut whatever it wishes as it swung. During elongated fights, Anubis will analyze each strategy and attack thoroughly, and once they are carried out, will not work again against it. As Anubis can accurately predict and counter any repeated strikes. More deadly enough, the longer Anubis controls a host and fights with them, the faster, smarter, and more powerful this controlled body will become. Unless you can break the sword, disarm the possessed person in question, or throw the sword in a river, this sword and its new body will eventually be unstoppable. If you are one of those lucky few to have a stand, whipping this sword out will not only have you mind controlled, but Anubis will also take full control of your stand as well. And if it were to puppet a stand like Star Platinum, would make a threat even more undefeatable for you to be cut down by. 
So you're either going to have your body and mind taken control of by the sword, and once it's done with you, we'll make you commit seppuku and kill you off, or you're just going to be killed by a guy that turns into a master of the sword, or even your barber who will give you a cut that's not too fresh. <gasps> Yo, I've been thinking about to do! Shockingly enough, the stand Bastet is really attractive. And no, not because the user herself is hotter than bacon on an Arizona sidewalk, but because it makes others magnetically attractive. Bastet is visible to anyone as a mere electrical outlet on any surface. If you simply graze or touch this outlet, you will receive a slight electric shock. No biggie, right? It's not like you got electrocuted to death or anything. No, the deadly factor comes from the slow building effects of being shocked by this stand. Your body will gradually build a magnetic force, attracting any and all metal in your vicinity. The longer after the initial shock, the more powerful this magnetism becomes. At first, only small things like pocket change and bottle caps will slyfully stick to your body, but over time, things such as cars and electrical wiring can shoot their way towards you rapidly, crushing you or electrocuting you. Having metals of all shapes and sizes fling at you at high speeds just for existing is game enough to have you die within a short amount of time. Of course, the stand user must keep their distance from their magnetic targets, but if they play their cards right and don't fall for a pincer maneuver trap, they can easily see to executing their target. Imagine this power being used in military endeavors to sabotage enemy troops or engineers, depending on where Bastet's electrical outlet is placed, considering the conspicuous placement it had before. Also, if someone else is affected by this stand's magnetism, you both will be really Really attracted to each other suddenly, and you may end up humping your friend or loved one to death, or in the very least, dying of embarrassment. Speaking of embarrassing, I won't be able to show much of this next stand's effects, but Sethan or Sethan, I don't know how to pronounce it, but someone will say this video wasn't worth it because I couldn't pronounce it, but whatever. Sethan is actually quite terrifying as it is the literal long casting shadow of its user. Its power comes into full effect once someone's shadow intersects with this shadow stand. Depending on how long you're within his shadow will cause you to revert backwards in age at a very drastic rate. With Polnareff in the series, being touched by the shadow for even a second forced him to become an eight-year-old child, regressing him almost 20 years. While a kind-hearted, big-boobed woman who stood in it for up to 10 seconds was reverted to the state of an early-term fetus. Merely touching this shadow for up to 10 seconds de-ages you that quickly and to that extent. Of course, de-aging to the point of becoming a fertilized egg would have you die instantly, or being out of the non-existent womb as a fetus long enough would have you dead in a short period of time as well. On top of that, you will not be safe as a child either, as your mental capacity will be reduced and any memories you had as an adult will disappear. That, and if you had not developed a stand before this age and you had one beforehand, you will be unable to summon them. But if you were able to do it as a kid, you will have a young version of that stand, however severely weakened and less capable it would be to put up a decent fight. With you as a defenseless child, the stand user can easily seek to executing you, either by his own stand or by the shadow's hand, as any weapon the user wields will cast a shadow that the stand can also attack with. So either you will die of Hyper Benjamin Button Shadow Syndrome, becoming a fetus that somebody will step on, being slaughtered as a defenseless child, or being lacerated by a shadow from afar. Unless you're in a totally dark room where shadows cannot even be cast, you're gonna be singing Steel Dragon very soon. Luck can play an important factor in some stands' meanings of wiping you out. Osiris, and no, not born from it, Osiris has no physical fighting capabilities, with its merits stemming from luck, 
cunning, and deception. When the user enters a match of chance or a gamble with another individual, a veritable wagering of souls occurs. Think of the English version of Yu-Gi-Oh, where the loser is sent to the Shadow Realm. Whether the game involves flipping coins in glasses of liquid, picking which piece of meat a cat will eat, or some good old poker, it all relies on the chance of a gamble. And if you lose said gamble, your soul will be ripped from your body by the stand and converted into a poker chip the user will add to their personal collection, leaving your body lifeless but not dead. But I would say, if your soul isn't returned to your body in time, your body could die of dehydration hydration, malnutrition, or just, you know, decaying, basically because your body is in a vegetative state. You could attempt to gamble for a friend's soul back at the cost of your own. But would you really want to risk the odds against someone who has the willpower strong enough that it develops a stand completely reliant on luck? If you really think so, well, go ahead, Mr. Juster. The user will most likely be a master of the con and gamble, being able to cheat without being caught weighing the odds in their favor. And worst of all, even if you haven't lost yet against the stand user, if your heart and soul admit defeat in the slightest way, the stand will rip your soul from your body anyways, and you will kill over. If you get fed up and think you can pull a video game donkey in the middle of a game of poker, when you lose, you lose. You know, what can I say? You fucking cheated bastard! Well, killing the stand user will also automatically kill every single individual who has their soul in his chip collection. So unless you are Jotaro Kujo levels of cunning and have just as good of an eye as him to catch any sleight of hand or cheating, you are not going to be winning any gambles against this user and his stand. That is, unless you kill the guy before gambling with him, but you'd be killing all his previous victims in the process. What's that in the sky? It's a bird! Oh wait, yeah, it is a bird. Followed by a cool skeleton bird. Horus can be manifested by a hawk-eyed falcon, being able to use cryokinesis to create large chunks of ice and manipulate it at will. If it can use enough ice for moisture in the air, it can crush vehicles under giant blocks of ice instantly. Out of nowhere, it can create spears of ice as well to use as missiles to harpoon its prey. It could freeze open bodies of water, or create walls of ice, May style, to trap foes for an easier kill. Injuring the bird or its stand can afford you some time, but the user can use this cryokinesis to freeze over its wounds to prevent bleeding. It will also make razor-sharp icicles inside its beak and talons to increase its ripping lethality. Falcons being already skilled hunters, having a skilled killer being able to use these natural skills with ice-type abilities would be a deadly combination. Dying to advanced frostbite, crushed under giant blocks of ice, being headshot by icicles, being futurama or being disemboweled would have your body on ice no matter what. Oh, that's a baseball! Gambling makes a grand return with the stand Atom, almost exact in nature to the stand Osiris, being able to steal the souls of people that lose in a gamble with the user. However, in this instance, Atom has a secondary power being able to read the auras of others when asking them a yes or no question. Even if they are lying through their teeth, their soul will tell the truth and will respond resoundingly with either a yes, 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 or a no, 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 no. Meaning in a chance of a gamble, the odds are so much more stacked for the user and not for you. Of course, the user in the anime preferred the stakes of video games. The stand itself is able to detach parts of its body in order to have a safety protocol, basically saying he will crush your arm if you try to attack him. Its fast reflexes can also make the user a pro gamer, making defeating them all the much more harder. So unless you put in real gamer hours and you're a Korean level Counter-Strike player, you may find your soul being torn from your body and turned into a doll for the user's collection with your body remaining lifeless and eventually dying. And again, trying to kill the user will have all the dolls vanish 
killing every victim instantly. Interestingly enough, the first time in my Why You Wouldn't Survive videos, this may be the only ever time and instance where being good at video games could mean you could survive. How about that? Are you an insane? Now entering the void, the stand Cream is a truly dark and horrific sight with an even more dark ability. Controlled by the best named character in the series, Vanilla Ice, but the English variation being called Cool Ice, goddamn copyright. But the stand is able to summon a dark hole to an unknown dimension from its own mouth. Much like black holes in the void of space, due to the sheer high amounts of gravity in their volume, they can disintegrate anything that draws near. In order to get the metaphysical ball rolling, it will seemingly devour the user and itself, creating the ball-shaped black hole. While in this state, Cream and its user are completely blind and deaf to the nearby surrounding environment and will attack blindly, but in a semi-strategic and calculated way. Although if unsuccessful after some time, the user will have to step out to take a peek, making themselves wide open to be attacked. The dark hole ball will move at a very fast rate, plowing through any obstacle and destroying anything in the way, instantly disintegrating concrete, metal, and even humans with no trace of anything that it completely intersects with. Even outside of the void, the stand has enough strength to decapitate a human being with a simple karate chop. The sudden, swift, and unpredictable nature of a man that can go within its own stand, creating a black hole that will disintegrate anything it touches can lay waste to many a man. And defending yourself against the void of nothingness is inevitable. You would have to be a master strategist just to avoid not being disintegrated and waiting long enough for him to come back out. And if you do fight him directly head on, he could probably just karate chop your head off. As the void stares back at you whole, only to consume you, leaving nothing but silence and maybe your arms in your wake. And saving the best for last, you've been waiting for it, the source of 90% of all big JoJo memes. <laughs> Known the world over, or maybe I should pronounce it. Oh crap, how does it go? I think it's pronounced. Dio, not accounting for his vampiric origins and power, has a hellishly overpowered stand called Zawaldo, where at a moment's notice, the user can stop time completely, leaving only the user and stand unaffected. Depending on how much the user has mastered this power depends on how long they can have time stopped for, with Dio reaching 5 seconds after only a month of training, then 9 seconds after a strenuous battle with Jotaro Kujo that ultimately led to his <laughs> この友人を作ったりするのも安心するためだ。すべて自分を安心させるためだ。今のお前のように死を覚悟してまで私に挑戦することの方が。そうかそうか、ポルナレフ。階段を降りたの。妹の敵は撃てたし。極東からの旅もま
Why do I feel like a lot of stuff just happened without me knowing? Oh, uh, well, I think you got the gist of what the world can do. Well, that was all the stands that could put an end to your life in part three of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, otherwise known as Stardust Crusaders. Ranging from time-stopping muscle-bound demigods, to wish-granting murderous genies, to yellow piss blobs that will deceive you and eat you alive, to even simply water crushing your head inside a canteen. The fact that if you are not a stand user, meaning that you won't be able to see a majority of stands, means you have no literal means of defense or way of fighting back unless you directly kill the user, which the stand itself will probably not allow to happen. You cannot harm a stand if you do not have a stand of your own. The dangers of not knowing if any person, place, or thing is real or fake or if they are stands disguised to take you out unguarded could either have you dead before you know what's going on or paranoid at every nook and cranny you come across. No matter where you go, there will be some type of stand that will use the environment to their advantage, burning you alive, drowning you alive, just any kind of thing can happen. The literal world will be out to get you. Attempting to get your own stand by using the arrow would have a huge chance of just outright killing you with its latent virus, instead of bestowing a stand upon you. And even then, your stand would have to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against another stand if you can stand that amount of references to stands. Yare, yare <laughs>